assemble the model, you can remove the skewer that we're using for the C2 axis. And we notice that it models very nicely one of the vertical mirrors. We can actually take the molecule apart. We see that the left side and the right side are mirror images of each other. And again, we're using the same convention that we have showing the uh, two central carbon atoms. And we're using dashes and wedges and straight lines to show the relative orientations of the substituents relative to the plane of the paper. And the plane of the paper, in this case, is also the exact same plane as the vertical mirror. So it shows a couple of different things at the same time. We can look inside the molecule. We can look in and see where the wedges are going to various substituents. So again, this is our D3D model. We've shown one of the vertical mirrors, and we've shown where the C2 axes are. Now, while we can only demonstrate one of the C2 axes in terms of making the whole molecule rotate, so we can do that, we can rotate this particular part and show that it lines up again at the end, we actually have holes through the model that actually show where all three of the C2s are going to go. And one of the things we'll notice, I'll kind of pull this apart here, you may be able to see inside the molecule that we have a hole drawn in between the two carbon atoms. And it turns out that all three of the C2s are going to go through that point. So that's a very important point in our molecule. So that's where all, not only does the C3 axis go along the line connecting the two carbon atoms, but all three of the C2s that are perpendicular to it, that are normal to it, that make it a D group, go through that particular point. So because we only have a finite size for that hole, it's difficult to get all three of the C2s into the model at the same time, unless you were to make this hole a lot bigger, or you were to use uh, skewers that were very, very much smaller. But we can do it one at a time, and it demonstrates it quite nicely. For our next molecule, let's look at a 1,2-dichloroethane, where the chlorines are in an anti uh, anti conformation. So we see that chlorine's on top and in the back it's on the bottom. So they're as far as possible away from each other. So for this particular molecule, this would be the low energy conformation. What we'd like to determine is what is the point group symmetry of this particular molecule. If you were to try to work out if it had a C3 axis looking down this axis, we notice that if we did a C3 rotation, it would take chlorine to hydrogen, since they're different, we see that this molecule no longer has a C3 uh, high order rotation axis. So we want to look for what the high order rotation axis is going to be. And it turns out that it is actually a C2. So if we look at one of the positions that we used before, going through the side of the molecule and between the two carbon atoms, we will actually see that we do have a C2. So if we start off with our molecule, like this, and now we do a 180 degree turn around the axis. Get this lead line up again, and we see that the chlorine lines up with chlorine, the hydrogen's back where it was again. So we see that it really does have a C2 axis, and this is the only C2 axis in the molecule. So this one that goes sort of side to side, that is the one and only C2. It is the high order rotation axis. At the same time, we also want to look for mirrors. And it turns out we do have a mirror for this molecule. And the mirror is the mirror that we get by splitting the molecule into two parts. We can see very clearly that the left side and the right side are mirror images of each other. That chlorine is the image of chlorine. Hydrogen is of hydrogen. And in the back, it works exactly the same. We could flip the molecule over and look at it from the back side. And we get exactly the same sort of view, we can see that it really is a mirror. Now the interesting question is, what type of mirror is it? Well, the mirror goes along this particular plane, and we would notice that if we put our C2 back, at least temporarily, that it turns out that our C2 axis is perpendicular to the mirror plane. That tells us that our mirror plane is actually a horizontal mirror. So in this case, we have a C2 axis, and a horizontal mirror. This tells us that we have the point group 
C2H. But even more than that, in addition to having a C2, a horizontal mirror, and the identity, we have one other symmetry operation. And that symmetry operation is inversion. So we actually have inversion. And a way to see that we have inversion in this is that if we go at this end, we have chlorine. If we go in the same direction, the same distance to the center, in the opposite direction, we also hit a chlorine atom. For this hydrogen, from the hydrogen to the center is a certain distance. If we follow that same distance in the opposite direction, we also get a hydrogen atom. So C2H has another very important symmetry operation that isn't included in the name, but is still an important part of the point group, the small i, the inversion operation. Now, because this has inversion, we see that it is a centrosymmetric uh, molecule, and we would be able to recognize this by uh, vibrational spectroscopy, so long as the molecule did not change conformation in the meantime. Um, if we were frozen in this conformation, we could tell easily by using vibrational spectroscopy. Recall that when we have centrosymmetry, we have the inversion as a operation, as a symmetry operation of the group that Raman and infrared will give bands, neither of which is included in the other. So a vibrational band will be either in Raman or in IR, but not both. When we have that situation, we could immediately recognize that we have a molecule with this property of the inversion.